Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Is it's it episode. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 80? 80. Wow. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel. Billy Joel lyrics. And uh, we were just talking about Prince, and I just realized I have my Prince lighting on. Oh, yeah. I should maybe brighten it up a little bit with my phone. What an age we live in. A crazy age we live in. Yeah. I got the ring light on, which anybody who knows a ring light will automatically know. I have my ring light on right there. In the oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. It's not yeah. subtle. It it's is light. not subtle. Yeah, this is episode, Prince. This episode is episode 80. 80. That's a lot of damn episodes. Yeah, man. Um, so you're still on strike. Yep. That they feel like we're gonna be for a while. Yeah, you don't see any daylight, right? I don't. There is a virtual meeting coming up later this week where they will let us know how it's going. Yeah. So the fact that they're having a meeting at all tells me maybe something happened, like they made an offer and it got rejected. Sure. Something like that. Um, yeah, I saw an article that was released by some network that said their they released their fall schedule. That's uh, their strike proof fall schedule. Ah, uh, yes. I don't know if you saw that. Which just yeah, means- a- a- ABC. Yeah, where it's uh, it's all uh, game shows, game shows and reality, right? Yep. Yeah. Which uh, is which they need writers for those things. Yes, they and union writers. Yeah, most of them. So, you know, with the reality show, you can get around it because you can do it with just editors. Yep. But then you're going to have to have an actual reality show, which they haven't made in years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because all um, the nonsense is scripted now. And yeah, and all the stuff like uh, I don't remember exactly what shows they had, but stuff like uh, the Shark Tank, some of that stuff's written. Yep. You know, somebody writes it. I don't know what how they're planning on pulling this off. My favorite is that they have uh, reruns of Abbott Elementary, <laughs> like the, one of their featured pieces. Like yeah, yeah that's, that's the one that's going to draw people in. The one that was written by writers. Yep. But it's yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I love that they've already lost like ten times as much money in stock prices as it would take to just pay everybody to get everybody. Yep. And what yep. is their long game? That's just so dumb. I don't know. I think somebody's convinced them that AI is really going to do everything, so yeah. they're hanging on to that. I really don't know. I can't imagine what goes on in those. Uh, yeah. I remember, so I remember, do you remember the, I don't know if you were in LA at the time, but there was a grocery store strike. Mm. There was a grocery store strike because at one point the grocery store workers were like, we would like to get paid or whatever it was that they were upset about. Sure. And management was like, but we don't want to pay you. That's more or less what the, all the, always what it's about. <laughs> yeah. well, when the dust settled, the, the um, grocery stores lost 20 or 30% of people to alternative ways to buy groceries. And right. they didn't come back. Right. And that's the dummy thing that management never seems to understand. Yeah. People will fill the gap. Yeah. You know, baseball, it's the same thing. It's like, it's going to take a while for people to follow. I mean, the sports people will eventually come back because people are suckers. Right. But, <laughs> it's, you know, with with necessities, people will find a way to get it. And then right. the way they'll get it from that point forward. It's just very dumb. Yeah. And if it's entertainment, boy, do you have a lot of choices? Yeah. Oh, there's no TV. OK, I'll play my Xbox. Yeah. Right. Oh, now, now I like Xbox better. I'll yeah. just do that. Forever. <laughs> yeah. And now that a lot of games is pretty good storytelling now, too. Yeah. Some of it's really good where it's legitimately they're telling you a story and the art is amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it's and and you're participating. So 
you've got okay. that juice going. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you something I did this week. I wrote a new joke and I realized it's a Jimmy Carr joke. Oh, great. <laughs> it's, well. not, it's not one that already exists. Oh, <laughs> that's not okay. what I mean. Just the I, right flavor. Yeah, I'm like, this would be a perfect Jimmy Carr joke. So I'm going to share my my Jimmy Carr joke with you. Understand it's my joke, but this would be perfect for Jimmy Carr. In fact, I'll so I do it the way he would do it. He goes, philosophy, you like philosophy. Let me start out with something. Mm -hmm. So if you were trapped on a desert island and you could only be bring one book with you, how long before you tried to fuck it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> fantastic Jimmy Carr joke <laughs> yeah uh, I, the thing here's what I hate about Jimmy Carr I hate the moment when he goes anybody want to heckle don't do that oh yeah yeah that's fun for you but <laughs> don't create a culture yeah don't make it seem like that's something people should be doing yeah no you're training people that they should only heckle when asked. If that happens, fine. Maybe, yes. maybe you're just teaching manners, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Appropriate. Maybe that's hope. All right. It's time for a heckle. Ugh, I despise it. And then it's always he, like, he goes, and he'll have a joke back. And it's always something about the guy's mom. Yeah. Like, ugh, boy, just tell your jokes. <laughs> your jokes. Yeah. I like your jokes. Don't do this part. Yeah, don't do that part because it's very. It's also like crowd work isn't supposed to be that written. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, somehow it's not as cool. Yeah, it's like when people do when people in music will scat and they'll prepare one. Right. They'll that, write down all the scats. Yeah, I've seen that. By the way, I've Scat never, lyrics. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't prepare to a scat. <laughs> oh, yeah, sons of bitches. All right, so this is the song you picked. <laughs> you picked Stormfront, which I believe is from the album Stormfront. Stormfront. It's off the Stormfront. It's off the Stormfront LP. And uh, it's a weird song. Right? I it's like it. Weird. I don't know. I don't think I like it. I I find it kind of funny that of all the songs, of all the things you could have called Stormfront on the album Stormfront, <laughs> this particular song really has nothing to do with sailing or ship being on a ship. It doesn't really. It's all really. well, poetic to mean something else. Yes, it is all a metaphor. Yeah, none of it's about an actual being on a ship. It'd be like if I'm on the Down Easter Alexa and you found out that was the name of a lady. And you're like, what? <laughs> oh, that doesn't... Get off of her. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's weird to me that, yeah, everything that's wrong with this song is all the stuff that's right with Down Easter Alexa. Because that is a great, very specific song about the ocean and sailing and making a living that way yeah. with lots of great details. And this one, first of all, the lyrics are very nautical, yes, but the music doesn't go with it. If you just read the lyrics and tried to imagine what the song sounded like, you would imagine something close to Down Easter Alexa, probably. Yeah. Like a sea shanty of some kind. Yeah. And this is like a little jazz, <laughs> like a little New Orleans restaurant song. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's no. It's, it's odd. I, I like the music fine. I was... Does he do this very often? I don't think so, right? this what do you mean oh no this kind of music I've, I've never heard him do this song it it kind of reminds me of like a song by it reminds me musically it reminds me of a song by sting it feels more like something sting oh would. yeah okay you could say that yeah and not a song by sting that i like but a song that he also does because <laughs> sting will get up his own ass sometimes because i love sting but every now and then i'm just like come on man yeah. Yeah. 
no nobody uh, loves sting more than sting and sometimes that'll get you know to you sometimes it shows fields yeah. of gold yeah although i happen to like that song but I, it is a little bit something it's a, it's a bit much yeah it is definitely a bit much that i don't mind because i feel like that's a sincere bit much it's when he's too jazzy and there's too much like hey look at me i've got musicians with me uh -huh. he does that too much he does that a lot and he'll do that with like an old song he'll like take roxanne and he'll be like you know roxanne <laughs> and you're like why did you remake this this way and that's not a made-up example look up what he's done with some of his classics yeah. Oh, I've heard some. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah, we get it. You have jazz friends now. <laughs> yeah. He's out with his jazz friends. They're not enjoyable versions of the song, and for some reason, the Spotify thinks that's the one I was looking for. <laughs> I feel like uh, Spotify is like a restaurant where they're like, "We got to get rid of this meatloaf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> give it to Jim." <laughs> you're like, I don't want meatloaf. He's too polite to send it back. Damn it. All right. <laughs> send it to our politest listeners. <laughs> uh, but this, I this song sounds to me like uh, someone, like an executive came to him and was like, hey, it'd be great if this album was called Stormfront. You should write a song by that title. And <laughs> if you get it in by six, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. It's funny. Like, it's oh, okay. Funny that you say New Orleans restaurant because that really does nail it too because it really does feel like this was written to sound like we're jamming. Yeah. But you're we're not jamming. deliberately jamming. Yeah. If the song was like about New Orleans, then I'd be like, all right. Yep. It's fine. But you wouldn't hear this song on a boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does. It's like even New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans is on the water, but it seems like the wrong part of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. I do. I absolutely do. The very Atlantic. Yeah. Like it's choppy waters off of Long Island. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I will say that unlike a couple weeks ago when we had a song that we both hated, I didn't hate it, and I thought there are certain things in the lyrics that I like that I think are intentional. That feel a little maybe they're a little too clever, but I like them for that. Yeah. We'll talk about that. But did you like the music at all? Like if you just Yeah, you know, I like the music fine. I just think it doesn't match up. Yeah. I like the lyrics fine too. I'm also like, eh, it just feels forced. Yeah. Did you like because I like the fact that it's called Stormfront? The album's called Stormfront. I'm expecting a song about the ocean or water and you listen to it and you look at the lyrics and you're like, this isn't about the ocean or water. Now, I don't understand what you mean by that because there's a lot of ocean and water imagery. Yes, imagery, but it's not, none of it's actually about that. It's all right. about a relationship. It's an ocean metaphor for right. But the, that, That's what I mean is none, none of it is actually, like a Billy Joel song, like, the Ballad of Billy the Kid, Billy the Kid isn't standing in for something. It's about Billy the Kid, although it's right. not. Because <laughs> yeah. but and like the Down Easter Alexa is about that experience. Right. Whereas this isn't about that experience at all. This is just water is standing in for, you know, the ocean is standing in for what it stands in for, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's not about the experience of being on a ship. It also feels like he just learned a whole lot of stuff about <laughs> sailing. Yeah. In like the year before this album came out. <laughs> and then he wrote down Easter Alexa and was like, this is great. What a great song. I want to do more. So, I want to mention the Beaufort scale. Yeah. Because I learned what that is. Yeah. And then you're like, uh, it, it, yeah, I think that's why it feels so forced. It, yeah, it's definitely... There's one particular lyric that I love and maybe you'll hate. That'll be funny if that's the case because I love it because it seems it's just kind of interesting to me. So let's maybe talk about the lyrics. All right. Who, who should go first? 
I don't know. It's not, I'm on a different site for my lyrics this time. Are you on Genius? I'm at BillyJoel.com. That seems pretty reliable. Yeah. No comments <laughs> for this one. Why can't I ever find BillyJoel.com? Oh, here it is. Stormfront. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Now they're divided up. Yeah. All right. You go, Migo. Um, I'll go. You go. Uh, Migo. <laughs> <laughs> Safe at harbor, everything is easy. Off to starboard, 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 starboard. <laughs> Off to starboard, daylight comes up fast. Wait a minute. Are we safe at harbor or are we off to starboard? <laughs> uh, you can be both. I guess, yeah. Now I'm restless for the open water. Red flags are flying from the Coast Guard mast. They told me to stay. I heard all the information. I motored away and steered straight ahead. Though the weatherman said, all right, let's 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 parse this. So right <laughs> now, you could think this was just about sailing at the moment. Sure. Because we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Safe at harbor, everything is easy. Sure. Off sure. to harbor, daylight comes up fast. Now I'm restless for the open water. So he's 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 in a safe spot, but he's bored. Right? Can't wait to get sailing. Can't wait to do something. Red flags are flying from the Coast Guard mast. Absolutely a thing he just learned about. Yeah. And that, <laughs> And that's when the Coast Guard is warning you, hey, don't you shouldn't go out today. Don't sail. Yeah, they told me to stay. I heard all the information. I motored away and steered straight ahead, though the weatherman said. So he's going out against his better judgment, and he's going yep. against expert advice. <laughs> yeah, he's the new guy <laughs> in yeah. our and he's pretty sure he knows better than the coast guard yeah um he's <laughs> he's gonna sail out to sea he is like a a dentist who got a harley yep that guy yeah my my brother has always said like as i mentioned i was thinking of getting a motorcycle at one point and my brother has rode a motorcycle since he was like 16 so he and he said well you shouldn't do that that's what he said yeah because you're too old to be doing that nonsense and yeah and then here's this moron on a boat who's like well, i'm taking it out <laughs> i don't care what the coast guard says they're probably being too careful all right i'll read the the, the oh yeah and then, the chorus. yeah there's a storm front coming mood in to go and i must say i do like the backup singers I do like that, and I do like the phrase mood indigo. Yeah. Don't know what it means. I didn't either, and I was irritated, so I looked it up. I wanted to know okay. what mood indigo means. And within there's two contexts for it. One context is it's the color that opens up the third eye. And uh, that's not the context here, thankfully. Yeah, probably not. Um, it is also uh, mood indigo, and there's a famous old timey song called mode indigo uh mode indigo is color associated with um passion new love um crush that kind of like okay pressure. that seems appropriate yeah and here's the lyric i i really like white water running and the pressure is low storm front coming mood indigo Small craft warning on the radio. I just kind of like small craft radio. The radio but that's like the one. <laughs> I like pressure is low because typically, if in lyrics, when you talk about something dangerous or it, the pressure's high. Yeah, it's a but high pressure he, situation. Yeah, he is using pressure is low for the same purpose that's because cool. within a weather situation, pressure low pressure is a it leads to a storm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little irony that low pressure is, is high and creates high pressure situations. Yeah. is And I liked that here. And I thought, oh, that clearly is on purpose. I like that. Very nice. Did you, I agree. Yeah. Did you notice that? Or, or am I, I didn't. I, I didn't oh, notice that. 
you win. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also I like small craft warning on the radio <laughs> because it's, it's, he's in heavy metaphor. Yeah. Mood storm front coming white whitewater running. The pressure is low. And then small craft warning is so specific yep. uh, that it just pops out and sounds silly. Yeah. Like some, that big metaphor talk. And at oh. the moment, Mood Indigo, is, Mood Indigo is the only indication that there's romance here. Yeah. It's at, um, yeah, at the moment, yeah, it's all that chorus sounds to me like uh, they might be giants. B side, yeah, I could see that for sure. Just with a small craft warning, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I say that because there are more lyrics coming up that fit that bill. Yeah, it, it's hyper specific stuff. That when they might be giants does it, it sounds like expertise. Yeah. And when uh, Billy Joel's doing it, it sounds like uh, hobbyism. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he was looking up, uh, he was looking at stuff and went, oh, that. Yeah. yeah. You get the feeling like uh, They Might Be Giants have known that stuff for 12 years before they put it in a song. Oh, yeah. If, if we ever wanted to do another weird, just another diversion, Birdhouse in Your Soul, the lyrics are ridiculous. They're so good. So good. Yeah. Um, it, this seems to me, I feel like Billy Joel had to go to like a, some sort of boat seminar <laughs> to get his little boat license and, um, had a notebook and just wrote down all the cool phrases. Dude, I bet that happened. He's like, oh, that's, that'd be cool in a song. <laughs> and then he just was like, oh, fuck it. I'll put them all in one song. <laughs> yeah. And he took <laughs> lots of notes and he scratched off the one that said that he wasn't supposed to be drinking while he sailed. <laughs> I don't care what you say about that. I'm ignoring red flags. <laughs> oh, another one. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll go. Yes. I've been sailing a long time on this ocean. Sure, pal. Man gets lonesome all those years at sea. I got a woman. My life should be easy. Most men hunger for the life I lead slant rhyme yeah the morning was gray but i had the motivation i drifted away and ran into more heavy weather offshore well yes pretty clear he's into a metaphor now because he's told us about the woman yeah that he uh is gonna cheat on if that's for, for sure he's cheating he's cheating wow. I like the lyric, most men hunger for the life I lead because some self-awareness. Yeah, it's like one of the few times it feels like Billy Joel's going, hey, you know what, maybe I am kind of lucky. <laughs> yeah. It only took this long. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know what, my life's pretty good. Yeah. However, I'm going to go fuck it up. Yeah. I don't necessarily like, I've been seeing a little long time on this ocean. This ocean, I don't know why the phrase is annoying, but yeah. it, it's, it's unnecessarily folksy. Yeah. Uh, where do you <laughs> sail? Well, I sail on this ocean. On this here ocean? Yeah, that just doesn't seem like a thing you'd say, but. Well, somebody said it at the boat meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was probably, yeah. It was another guy in his 50s who just bought his first boat and Billy Joel thought he was an expert. <laughs> um, I do like that he drifted away and immediately ran into more heavy weather. Yeah. The cheating didn't go smoothly for him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, good. Yeah. You made trouble for yourself and you immediately realize it. And there's a storm front coming, mood indigo, white water running, and the pressure is low. Storm front coming, mood indigo, small craft warning on the radio. Is the small uh, craft a little lady? What is that? Is that spoke or is it just he thought the phrase was as funny as we find it? <laughs> I don't think he did. Um, I think it's a thing he wanted to put in, and he's probably sad that it has a silly name. Oh, okay. You know, it, it was like a warning for 
small boats, but it, the fact that it's small craft, it also just tells you like, oh, you're not really a sailor. You've got this dinky little boat. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you know, you have a, probably like two big fishing rods on the back. You have some stupid name that's a pun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it it's, spends a lot of time in the space you're renting. It's just like, I wish the line was cooler, but unfortunately, that's what they call those warnings. Yeah. Which, of course, you would because you don't want it to be hard to understand what you're warning them about. Yeah, you want to know who's being warned. I'm sure if you have a giant barge, you're okay in certain weather. Yeah. But they're like, look, if you have a, a dinky little boat, stay home and write songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a low pressure system and a northeast breeze. We've got a fallen barometer and rising seas. We we got the cumulonimbus. bus. Say that for me. <laughs> Cumulonimbus. Cumulo no, no, nope. And a possible gale. <laughs> we got a force nine blowing on the Beaufort scale. There it is. <laughs> it's the Beaufort <laughs> scale. See, this is what I do like. Cause it ain't about boats and it ain't, but fucking if it, it but I'll be damned if boats and weather isn't in every stupid line. I kind of like that. It's really jammed up. Yep. There's not a lot of room between nautical references. Oh. Embus. Buddy. Um, great. It's great and terrible. Yeah, yes. yes. Here's what I hate about it. We've got that repetition of just like it's just lazy songwriting where you just want to do a list of things yeah oh we got this and we got that yeah well i think that's what made me think of a restaurant in new orleans yeah oh uh, we got chicken in a basket and we got ribs we got hurricanes yeah <laughs> come on down <laughs> Yeah, it's practically Alice's restaurant because you're right. It's just mess is this, is this, is this. Yeah. Yeah, we got them. We got yeah. it all. And we've got a Force Nine blowing on the Beaufort scale. I do kind of like, though, I don't know, because the thing from before with the low pressure, now we're explaining. Now, this is why low pressure is not good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I like falling barometer and rising seas. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. It should, the song should sound more fun than it does. Yeah. It just doesn't match up nicely. I wonder I, if this would be a banger live if he ever played it live, just because it sounds like it's supposed to be really fun to hear. Yeah. And it probably has, like, you could have good solos and stuff. Yeah. People goof it. jam. Yeah. I think I'm going to stick to my original uh, principle. I think I would like uh, They Might Be Giants to re-record this. I think, yeah, I think we can make that happen. Yeah. All right. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had an in. I, for five minutes, I was friends with one of their wives. Oh, nice. The Johns. I can't even remember how that, how did I meet her? Through another, through uh, Andy Richter's ex-wife <laughs> was friends with her. And I somehow I met them. And then she, who was married to a They Might Be Giant, uh, wanted weed. Ah. I got weed for her. That was nice of you to do that. She's like, oh, cool. Thanks. I'll get you tickets sometime. And I just never heard from her again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that was close. That's pretty funny. This one must have been a long time ago because it was when it was difficult to get weed. <laughs> it hasn't been for difficult for musicians' wives to get weed. I don't think it ever was. Oh, yeah, that's true. I really understand what the problem was, frankly. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she might as well have said, I needed tickets to see They Might Be Giants. What? Yeah, <laughs> or me tickets. Hey, can you, hey, mister, can you buy me some beers? 
<laughs> well, you're 48, right? <laughs> They'll let you buy beers. Uh, but I, I, I just get embarrassed. <laughs> I'm still restless for the open water, though she gives me everything I need. That's a good confession. Yeah. She asked me to stay, but I'd done my navigation. I I drove her away, but I should have known to stay tied up at home. Well, that's kind of nice and sad. Oh, nice and sad, and also regressive. Good, I mean, <laughs> tied up at home. Oh yeah, yeah. No, him. Like, oh, oh, honey, I should have just stayed bogged down with you. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah. I should have just accepted that this was fine. <laughs> yeah, you should have dropped anchor on you, darling. Yeah. How did he not have anchor? Yeah. That's... With all the other stuff going on. It's a giant miss. Maybe that's why it wasn't a hit. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, that's probably it. <laughs> just fans just booing at the end. No anchor. <laughs> Still restless for the open water, though she gives me everything I need. She asked me to stay, but I'd done my navigation. I drove her. You know, the other thing that occurs to me as a flaw in the song overall. Yeah. Even though I like it, because I, I kind of like it for this reason, but it's also a flaw. It's clearly, like I said, it's not about a Salem guy. It's about... Right a wandering soul it's about cheating it's about that so there probably should have been a moment when we stopped with the <laughs> ship shit yeah true he's done that before where yeah. it's a heavy metaphor and then there's a reveal and then the rest of the song is about the actual reality yeah this is like, well, I have to get Cumulonimbus in. Yeah. Uh, I have to get navigation. This it's, has been the it's just, uh, I'm showing off my terms and I'm going to yeah. juggle them. And it's magnetic poetry for cheating sailors. Yeah. This would have been one of those songs that would have really benefited from one of his bridges that's different from the rest of the song. <laughs> Well, I think he did that with his uh, restaurant list. Yeah. But that's what I mean is that, yeah, that's still all ship nonsense. Yeah. If it had just been about the actual relationship or problem or cheating. Yeah. Instead of like, uh, I'm going to cram in some more stuff. <laughs> more stuff about ship. It's a very, and it's a light song. It is thin. We it's like very the, thin. It's not. And that, that's probably to its great benefit because if you're going to just do this, I don't need two more sets of lyrics with ship yeah. stuff. <laughs> this is all he could remember from the meeting. Yeah, where he's like, I got barnacles on my heart. And you're like, okay, no, too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, yeah, I agree. It's not a bad song. I don't think I can say I like it. It's interesting, I, you know, we always say some of the more interesting ones are the ones that don't quite work. Yeah. Rather than the ones, you know, uh, the ones that work very, very well. You obviously, you know, when you appreciate. Yeah. There's to talk about, but I always love the ones that are like, oh, close. <laughs> and if you're going to I know what happened. Yeah. And if you're going to write over 80 songs so far, then you're going to have a few weird weirdos in there, probably. Yeah, definitely. But uh, Food Indigo is such a weird inclusion. Yeah. I need something for the background singers to sing. I'll, itch, and I'll make it a phrase that's not anywhere else in the song. Yeah. And isn't nautical. Yeah. But also that no one knows. Is it? <laughs> So, Mood Indigo, in looking it up, what it typically references is romance and whatever, but it's also, it's darker colors, so I wonder if, if in his mind, I wonder if it's the sky. No, um, I wouldn't be surprised. So, there could be that on a, on a, and that would fit fine, 
and then it would fit and it would be the one part that appropriately fits both the yeah. romance the you know the the cheating and the passion and whatever the wandering eye and all that nonsense <laughs> right but 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 i like the ladies voices the lady yeah. hired to do the the backup singing were great i thought okay hey. yeah that stuff is all good yeah I do, I do just like a romance or you know a, a bad romance being compared to a cumulonimbus yeah. or a force nine blowing on the beaufort scale cumulonimbus did i do it you did it i don't know why that i looked at that word and it made me nervous <laughs> <laughs> well it's very long yeah how long <laughs> do you think he had to practice it <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why he doesn't do it in concert yeah, get to that part. Come on, that. Ah, damn it. All right. Start over. All right, never mind. I'm doing my life. Here we go. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, this is an odd song. I could understand. It's, I wonder how many of these songs he would hear and go, oh, I did do that song. <laughs> I wonder if you could do that to him. They're like, listen yeah. to this. Name this tune. Yeah. And have to get like three lines into it. Yeah, because there's his what he's gonna play now is really boiled down if you see him in concert. It's this is what I'm gonna play. For sure. The outliers that I might play. And these songs don't exist. <laughs> yes. These yeah. Songs. There's a huge trunk of songs that don't exist. Yeah. Um, what was he played in Los Angelinos when we went to see him? Yeah. And he said, this is off, you know, this is off Street Life Serenade. And a bunch of people went, woo. And he said, uh, you don't have that album. <laughs> what else did he say? He was like, oh, I don't have that album. Nobody has that album. That's pretty great. Oh, buddy. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it's nice that he's willing to just be like, yeah, that all sucked. Yeah. Which is not true, but well, <laughs> yeah, he's in a perfect place to be able to do that now because it's he's just making a ton of money at the garden. I mean, there are probably other artists who do that, but I don't, I can't think of any that I've heard be like, oh, that album stunk. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, usually you you got to kind of stick stick to your guns, pretend it was good. <laughs> yep, or just it, or just don't say anything about it. Yep. Uh, last week we talked about this is the time, and I had you listen to Cassandra Kabinsky's version. What do you think? Right. Um. Very moody. Yeah. Very slow. A slow rendition. Yeah. Um. Very nice. She has a lot of weird vocal moves. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to tell you this is reminding me of somebody very specific that I can't scare up right now. Maybe it was Carsey Blanton. I don't know I, who that is. It was reminding me of Carsey Blanton. I'm telling my producer. Um, I'll play it again later and you'll see why. <laughs> and meanwhile, you should check out some Carsey Blanton if you haven't. All right. Is that Carsey with a K or Carsey with a C? It's a C. Blanton? Blanton. Blanton, okay. What's the song I like? American Kid? Yeah. Buck Up. Buck Up or American Kid are the great songs. Buck Up. And then uh, it on the liner notes, it said that uh, the original, sa Billy Joel's original saxophone is played on that. Would that uh, be Richie Cannata? I'm assuming it's Richie Cannata, yeah. Um, yeah. This is the time, original saxophone. So I thought it was good, but I, 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 so here's what I thought. I thought that song just sounds better sung by a lady. Yeah, I do agree with that. It's, uh, yeah, it's haunting and moody. Yeah. Seems more appropriate. I feel like maybe she didn't have seagulls in hers. Yeah. <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. How did you come across that artist? 
um, my wife. So uh, my wife is a singer as well. And uh, she was at some club and doing, she was actually performing. And then okay. uh, she ran into this woman or somehow she married Joe, got exposed to this woman and or introduced her something and realized, oh, she does a Billy Joel cover. And she oh, was right. like, here, listen to this. If you and you and Alex should talk about it. I was like, okay, it was very nice. Very nice. I like it when my wife shows interest, even if I even like it when she feigns interest. Feigning is harder than actual interest. It, so it is. You get extra credit. Uh Sunday we celebrated our 32nd wedding anniversary. Congratulations. So she's been feigning interest in a long time because there's no way you're interested for 32 years. There's still a lot of times when you're not interested. Oh, yeah, I am not interested in myself for 32 years. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking downtime of just, okay, <laughs> we'll get through today. That'll be fine. Good on her and yeah. you. Thank you. What did you do? So we went to a Thai restaurant uh, because it's one of our favorite restaurants. And uh, I bought her flowers and... Right. She ended up buying me some clothing that she felt I needed to look like an adult. <laughs> Not the stuff I'm wearing at the moment, of course. Sure. <laughs> uh, and they're, they're very nice. And one of them, one of them, I would look very good on a boat. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Tie it back. I would look very good on a boat. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know what I would wear. I would have to go shopping if there was going to be a boat. Yeah. So I, it's anything. light blue pants. It's light blue plant pants. It's this white shirt with some blue patterny thing. It looks very casual. Um, if oh, so, here's where it would be great. Let's say you introduced me to somebody and I didn't know them before, and I got obsessed with them and I started dressing like them, and then tried to replace them. Ah, and then I tried to kill them on a boat. This is what I would wear. Okay, got well, it. I was holding a cocktail, but I'm definitely trying to kill him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Now I now I can see it. Thank you. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons. If you have friends with boats, just don't invite me. Yeah. Actually, you don't have friends with boats. Yeah. Don't don't be friends with a boat. <laughs> <Don't be. laughs> I so need friends. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple people in my neighborhood who have boats. And we're not oh. that close to water. Huh. I mean, we're close, but you're going to have to drive 30 or 40 miles. I always think, man, there's so much of that hobby that I would not enjoy. Oh, it feels like it's mostly maintenance. Right. Very little payoff. When we got our house, when we finally were able to get into a house, all the time that we've thought about having a house, we've always said, and as soon as we get a house, we're putting in a hot tub. We've always yeah. said that. And as soon as we got a house, we decided we're not putting in a hot tub. <laughs> you got them. There's a motor. There's cleaning the oh. damn thing. There's there's a hundred things that could go wrong with this stupid thing. There's yeah. got a cover on it for three months, and you realize I haven't got in a hot tub for three months. All right. Then mold grows on the cover. Yeah. Eventually, you get in it because you think, well, I should. Right. We paid all this money. And isn't that just the most relaxing thing is to do something because you should? Oh, oh yeah, man. I feel so, oh, this is so relaxing. Ten minutes is good, right? Then we can justify this? Okay, cool. <laughs> How much is that per minute? Oh, yeah. Fuck. So we did not do that. We, when we do an upgrade, we will get a big tub. Great. Because that, I believe in a big tub. Yes, I I still dream of a big tub. One yeah. fine day. Dude, for you, you've probably always, because you're a tall drink of water too, so it's probably always sucked. I, it's kind of mandatory to have a big tub. Otherwise, you're just not going to take a bath. No, or I'll do it for like 20 minutes, and then we're like, what am I doing? My knees are cold. Yeah. <laughs> but fuck this. I'd love to go to, you know, in LA, there's that hotel shutters Yep. by the beach. And they all, every room has a giant tub that's very deep. Ooh. And they wisely have a TV right above the tub. <laughs> and it's my favorite place. So that's your go-to when you take a visit and you need to uh, stay. 
Uh, it, unfortunately, it's not my go-to because it's in Santa Monica. Oh, okay. So it's like a great room, but then if you want to see anyone, you have to drive for four days. Yeah. Silver Lake. Sure. Um, so it, I've stayed there for like award shows a couple of times. Yeah. And this rules. And also it was free. So like <laughs> best double rules. Yes. I'm sure it's 700 a night or something normally, right? I'm sure. It's bonkers, I'm sure. Yeah. My buddy Walker, he is an AV guy at this hotel that's incredibly fancy. How fancy is it? Um, you can't from the outside tell that the building is a hotel. Oh yeah, that's real good. And the and he, he walked me through it. He's it's a good gig. He's and he walked me through it. And all the like wood and stuff is individually picked pieces of wood to build the motif of the hotel. And apparently that's two thousand dollars a night. Woo. But apparently, um, people like Chris Hemsworth and think it's great. So, I mean, yeah, it's one of the areas I still have trouble paying a lot of money for as a hotel. Yeah, it's like I could stay at the Ritz, and I will, um, but usually off season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I really want to do one of those. There's a big fancy one in Big Sur. Um, one of those cliffside hotels that's like, I think, yeah, 1500 a night or something. And I'm like, oh, I got to do it once. And I know, I, I already know I'll be mad. Yep. Because it'll be an incredible room over an incredible view. And then like the plug won't work <laughs> or something. And I won't be able to sign into my Netflix and I'll lose my fucking mind. Yeah. And also then the days, the night's over and you're like, oh, well, yeah, yeah room. And then they're also like, OK, now you have to get out. Yeah. Did you, did you ever watch Inside Amy Schumer? Yes. She did an amazing. There's an amazing sketch. One of my favorite sketches was she gets she gets a room in a fancy hotel for whatever reason. And the, the desk clerk is so nice to her and talks about how happy she is to see her and she you're my favorite celebrity and she's getting treated amazing and then it's checkout time and she sees that woman and goes hey and and she slowly gets kicked out and you realize that was the amenity now get the fuck out yeah really funny right and that's probably, really amazing sketches on that show oh yeah that was a lovely show I the, like her. I like sure huh yeah. A lot of for sure duds as well, but yeah, the winners were really good. Yeah, and for some reason, Amber Tamblin's on a lot of them. <laughs> so <laughs> I find that kind of funny because I like Amber Tamblin, but I'm like, why? Oh, I guess they're just friends. They're just friends. <laughs> I like shows when I realize somebody's only on it because they're friends. Yeah, that's fun when that happens. It just feels nice. What about when the uh, people show up in shows or movies because they're fans of that franchise? Love that. You good with that? Okay. Like when, um, what's his name? Um, James Bond is a, in a Star Wars movie, but he's a stormtrooper. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, my favorite because he's in a thing. And so who cares? Right. So nobody knows. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. I, I, as long as it's not distracting. I mean, I don't, but I don't. I don't ever find it distracting. What do you? What are your thoughts on that? I think maybe I found it distracting when Jack Black and Lizzo were in uh, the Mandalorian. Oh, funny! Yeah, he's like, oh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of stunt casting. Yeah, I think and that would bug me in a movie. It doesn't bug me on Disney Plus. Yeah, it shouldn't bug me probably. I mean, we like to be bugged by things, so feel free. It just it doesn't bug me because it's TV. I think it would bug me at the movies, though. Yeah, I'd like why the fuck is Jack Black in this? Yeah, it starts to feel like uh, one of those uh, variety shows from the seventies. Yeah, and and if I if you were the executive, wouldn't you say to the? You'd probably say to them, "Look, you can have Lizzo, you can have Jack Black, you cannot have them both together." <laughs> Yeah, not together. You, you can have both of them in different scenes, even. Yeah, but no, their characters, no, their characters never meet because at that point you might as well have Fred from the B fifty twos comes in next. Yeah, why not? Now uh, then, I'd love that. 
Hey, can I tell you something that happened? I just got this car. Oh. I just bought this car. You got a brand new uh, car. Yeah, I got I got this car. And uh, I thought this is the hip car, but people kept making fun of me. Huh. Um, hmm. It's a Model T, by the way. Model T. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I like it. I thought I thought this is what all the kids were doing, but I guess. Well, you got the white wall tires. Are you going to cruise the Miracle Mile? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Still rock and roll to me. Because <laughs> what's the matter with the car I'm riding? Uh, it's a Model T. That's what's wrong with it. What are you doing? <laughs> There's a lot. Of, yeah, you got a lot of problems there. If you if you open it up, it might go thirty. That's part of the problem. It's part of the problem. <laughs> is that the one you had to start with the crank? No, no. No, this is a. Oh, would that be great to have that? Who am I, Jay Leno? No. <laughs> Do you think he? Yeah, he must have one. I'm sure he does. Yeah, I'm sure he does. He uh, who was it? I'm trying to remember the celebrity he was talking to. It might have been Jimmy Fallon, but I, they were somebody like Jimmy Fallon was talking to um, Jay Leno about buying a classic car. Yeah, and he was getting advice because he was thinking of buying this classic car. And he just more or less, Jay Leno asked him a few questions about stuff he knows about cars. And then eventually Jay Leno told him, you need to get a new car. <laughs> Gave him really good advice. He goes, this isn't, it's not a car for you. <laughs> That's pretty great. Yep. And yeah, correct. You should lease, lease something. <laughs> yep. Have you ever had a car that was on the borderline of being a classic car? Yes. What do you have? I had in when I was in high school. I had a uh, a Gran Torino with the Starsky and Hutch paint job. Okay, that's there definitely. Fantastic. Hard to maintain, right? Um, I didn't really have it long enough to maintain it. Like the alternator went out. Yeah. After six months, and then my dad was like, "Oh, we'll just sell it. We'll get you something else." And then, yeah. No. What? Yeah. Get the new alternator, you idiot. Yeah. I had a VW bug from 1967. Great. It was old. It was great. I loved it. And then when it got too hard to maintain, which it did fairly quickly, I love that car. I sold it for so much more money than I paid for it. And it was broken. <laughs> wow. But because I found a car person who was gonna, who knew what, who knew what it was and right. do the thing with it. And I was like, well, it got a much better home. It got, it went to right. people. If I were to see that car on the street, I w I'm sure I wouldn't recognize it because it would look good now. Right. And it's probably still on the streets. I'm sure be and those are mad. Those cars are magic. Didn't you have, I seem to remember you having some car that had, uh, the door didn't close, so there was some rope tied around it? That is correct. What was that? That was a Datsun B210. That's what it was. The B210 Sundowner or something, maybe? Yeah, it was <laughs> my, my, my mother's gift to me. For my graduation from high school was her old car which is fine it was a car right and the solution to keeping the door closed was a rope <laughs> so uh, sometimes i would climb out the window which was fine and sometimes i would just get in the passenger side <laughs> and that car got demolished in my a uh, pretty bad car accident where i had an amazing concussion Oh, great. Yeah. And my favorite part, there's a couple things I remember from it and a lot I don't. My favorite <laughs> part was, so if the car's this big, after the accident, it was this big. Oof. It got smashed pretty good. Wow. And I got my, I hit by a drunk driver, my knee, I got to see my own kneecap. Woo. I, you don't need to, but it was an interesting experience to see that bone floating there. Wow. And I was really out of it for some reason. So 
So the the uh, fireman or the policeman, whoever it was who was there at the scene, came to my door, and I'm all confused. And I turned to the policeman and I said, "Are you all right?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and I remember the policeman going, uh, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You just sit there." And I was like, "Do you need any help?" <laughs> <laughs> I had a concussion, so I couldn't remember the day at all. So when I got home, I, uh, you know, Mary Jo, uh, who at this point, I think we were just living together. We weren't married yet. So this is a very long time ago. I said, oh, what happened? She said, you were in a car wreck. I was like, okay. I was like, oh, I'm all sore. What happened? And I kept asking. <laughs> and at one point I looked outside to where our car is usually parked. And I was like, where's our car? And I was, okay. Oh boy. It was a magical day of having to re-explain. And the way it, it reminded me, if you imagine a jigsaw puzzle blown apart. Yeah. That was my memory. And wow. then if you imagine that somehow throughout the day it started to go like this. Wow. Started to and so I started to piece things together and I started to be aware of all these bruises and scars and mess. What a fun day. Yeah. I'm glad it happened when I was in my 20s. Oh, yeah, because you would die if it happened now. Yeah, or worse, yeah. not die. Ooh. Yeah. And it would be <laughs> forever, be constantly in like, <laughs> how's Jim? Well, you don't do nothing no more. Oh, that's, that's great. He drinks a bit. Yeah. That's about it. Hey, I got a question for you. Bust. Um. Billy Joel is selling his Long Island mansion. I heard that. Did you hear? The qu The trivia question is, what is the asking price? I'll, Four, within, I'll give you within $3 million. I'm going to say $4.2 million. <laughs> you have not seen this house, have you? No. Oh, it's really big, isn't it? It's very it's, big. You it's, bought it's, it from Jerry Seinfeld. So it's a sprawling mansion. Okay, so what I'm going to say then is 36 million. Higher. Whoa. 45 million. Higher. 80 million. <laughs> lower, lower, lower. You were close. Okay. Uh, 49 million dollars. Wow. He's moving to Florida. Oh my god. Ooh, does that yeah. He's retiring then. I guess. Maybe. Wow, he's moving to Florida. I don't know if he's moving to Florida. He primarily lives in Florida these days. Okay. Are so, you... So I know you guys just moved into your place, so you're probably not looking at it yet. No, not looking at Florida, that's for sure. Oh, no, his place, since it's on the market. Oh, yeah, well, we're looking in, like, the 25 million range. <laughs> so if he's willing to cut it up, yeah, wow. Because you yeah, gotta find right. another you gotta find another maniac to buy it. Wow. Yeah. Have you seen pictures of it? Is it cool? I mean cool. It's <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. It's a giant sprawling estate yeah. with multiple buildings. Boy, that's so crazy too, because not only do you have to have sixty million dollars that you could no, well, you'll finance it. I'm sure you don't just pay. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're gonna have to. Then you're like, okay, how many groundskeepers does this place need? How many? Yeah. Any number of things. Yep. That a the only way I'd ever live in a place like that is if I was the caretaker. You're right. Yeah, that'd be all right. There's in Culver City. Culver City's weird. In Culver City in LA, it's just this, you know, ugly everything, just ugly, dumb buildings. And yep. yet in the middle of Culver City next to a movie theater, you'll you'll walk around a corner and you'll suddenly be next to a Hobbit house. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And there are these fountains and Bilbo Baggins lives there. It's a fucking Hobbit house. It's a round, round 
you know, ceiling. It's all this. It looks just old, so old. Well, the people who live there, it's just, you know, if you move into a place like that, they're like, yeah, you're not allowed to change nothing. Right, right. And also, people get to walk around it sometimes. <laughs> right. And it's just the price of doing business. Yeah, it's it's somehow even better that it doesn't belong because you walk, you're in Culver City and it's ugly and dirty and greasy and just a dilapidated part of LA and you turn the corner and you're like, oh, and there's these fountains and and for some reason nobody fucks with it. So I'm like, even the homeless people and the people who are hard in their luck are like, yeah, but I don't want to mess with this. This yeah. is nice. You walk by and it's very cheery to see it. It's like stupid and magical. Yep. It's you. I mean, that's pretty much LA in a nutshell, I guess. You want to have third breakfast when you see it. Oh, nice. <laughs> the only reason I remember that is because when I, I, when I read it, I was like, oh, I would like to live that way. Just have lots right. of breakfasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they're doing things right on the Shire. Yeah, they really are. My, my sister sent me a gift be, because she says she celebrates Hobbit birthdays. Do you know what Hobbit birthdays are? I don't. I didn't either. Well, well, it was her birthday, so she sent me a gift. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Nice. I was like, that'd be a great way, because then you could forget birthdays, because you don't be forgetting yours. <laughs> yeah, and that would only happen if you were in your B210. That's you right. Driver. Have we ever talked about, let me look at the lyrics real quick, have we ever talked about Josephine? I don't think I know Josephine. All right, we're doing Josephine. Um, it where, is. Where does off, that live? It is off of Piano Man. What? Yep. Sir, I think you're mistaken. Well, it says from the album Piano Man Legacy Edition. So I wonder if. Ah, Legacy Edition. Yeah, but it's on BillyJoel.com, so it's a song he wrote. He's the guy who wrote it. It's not like that weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? Definitely this was a cutting room. Oh, great. This was a cutting room song because release date, November 8th, 2011. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, I'm seeing here. Uh, unreleased. Rad. Okay, I accidentally picked something that's actually kind of great for us to talk about that's pretty great okay cool yeah see sometimes oh. not being prepared for this part of the show helps yeah this will be a song i i don't think i've ever heard in my life oh that's great How about that this is the this is the definition of the fucking deep cut yeah man yeah it's wow. so deep they cut it yeah that's so deep they cut it <laughs> 